If you need to streamline or even automate reports, documents, PDFs, or other forms of Airtable, there are many options available depending on your preferred outcome. You can natively create PDFs and documents from Airtable, but if you need more flexibility and or customization, there are a lot of external tools to use as well. Check this out. Welcome back to the channel. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Zach Stevenson. I'm a business process and no code consultant. If you need help streamlining or automating any of your business processes, you can visit our, our website, innerdevsolutions.com, or you can click the link in the description below to book a free consult. As mentioned, there's a lot of different options available. I'm going to start with the few options that we have right within Airtable. So the first one is going to be the page designer. This limits us to one page documents, but it does work quite well for those one page documents. You can generate it really quickly. And then we'll dive into interfaces. You can print various views within interfaces that could potentially work for some reports as well. And then we'll dive into the external options being integrating with make and Google docs, integrate with pdf.co that can both be a make integration. And there is an actual extension for PDF Co as well. The make element of that is a little more flexible. And then we also have a document option. I'm just going to briefly run over a couple of those, but there is a lot of different possibilities to be able to create the documents, reports, PDFs, and forms that you need. So let's get into it here. I'm going to start within this reports and documents base. It's just a template that I pulled from Airtable. It's got sales deals and sales reps. The first thing I am going to do, I'll look at this sales reps table and I'm going to create a very simple document with the page designer. I'm going to create a report for each of our sales reps based on the deals they have within the table. So if we go over to extensions, add an extension and we can add the page designer and that extension take a second here to get it loaded. Once it's loaded here, you have to select a table, select sales reps, and we'll leave the size to just being eight and a half by 11, your standard sheet of paper done. I can make this full screen so I can see what I'm doing and I'll go into edit layout. A few things right away that I want to bring in is name and we'll bring in all the sales deals. I'll move that down here. I'll get back to that in a second. So we'll bring in the quota closed amount. And before I start getting lost on what each of these fields are, I will add some additional text and, and just label this quota. You can have different formatting options as well as so as far as font size, weight, actual font style. So I want this to be bold. I'll just drop that in there for, then I can click on this go down here and duplicate the element. That way I can keep the same style and I can quickly change the text here. So this is closed out. And then we can add the additional fields here as well. So there's percent of quota. And after this, I'll just add this in here. You get the point. So you'll want to add your text field to be able to identify what the fields are. And then you can just easily click and drop in the different fields from your table. This is our all sales deals. So that's a linked record field type, more possibilities and options here. So I'll go back into edit layout. I'll select this and you can display them in list view. So you can just see all of the deals that they have. You can have it in line. So it just creates a list like that, or you have table. And this is going to allow us to bring in some additional data based on that linked record. So maybe a couple additional pieces that I want to bring in is the forecast value. Maybe I'll bring in the signed contract value and I will possibly bring in a date or something like that as well. So the expected close date. And you have the option to reorder these here. So I can bring in the expected close date, the forecast value and signed contract value. So this is just really basic example. But you get the point here that you can create these one page documents for each record within that table. So if I click next, it will go to the next person in the line. 
and dynamically bring in the data associated with that record. They have a few different options. You can go in and print it, save it as a PDF and upload it, send it out to your team, whatever you want. The downside to this is number one, you can only create single page documents. And number two, you can't automatically export these documents in a PDF format. You have to manually go in and select print or save as a PDF, something like that. For a very quick and easy report or document, it does work well. Option number two is within interfaces. If I go up here, I already have one developed. So I've got two examples. Here's a dashboard of the entire company. So you're having a board meeting, so that, and you want to bring in all of your sales data, the number of deals, some of your charts, those types of items. You can have this dashboard created. And you could simply screenshot that and include it in your report and your slide deck, whatever, something along those lines. That's just one quick method. And the other option is there's specific views within the interface designer, like this list view that does have a print option. Say you have a sales meeting or a board meeting and you want to show your board all of the uh, results from each of your sales reps, you can bring in this list view, go up here and click print this page, and it will allow you to print it in PDF format. That's the second option for generating reports and PDFs and documents natively within Airtable. Another option that we have within Airtable, and this generates a document or a report within your Google Docs or Google Drive, and it creates a Google Doc for you, but the integration is native to Airtable. If you go into automations, add a trigger, whatever you want the trigger to be, it could be on a scheduled timeline. And if we go over to here, we could pick maybe the first of every month, something along those lines. And you pick a specific time if you want, and we can move into the next step. So in this case, I'm just going to go find records and I will select the sales reps and based on a view just on this view so basically every single month on the first of every month it's going to find all the records within this view and then we can go into the next part which is google docs we'll create a google doc you have to select your account and you'll select your folder that you want to save it you can create a title here so i'll just call this sales report and we can add in a date that this runs. So at the actual trigger time, we'll add that date and time in there and that will be the title. And then the content, this is what is actually going to show within the Google doc, pretty limited to what you can do, but you can add in variables. You can add in static text, whatever you want. I will just add in a heading here and just call the sales report. And if you want, you can again, bring in the date and the last thing I'm going to select this find records and I'm going to insert a grid and then I can choose what data I want to actually insert within the Google doc. So we'll pick the sales rep name, maybe their quota, closed amount, percent of quota, and we'll leave it as is. So I'm going to. Remove both of those, click insert, and then I can give this a test. So I'll test the trigger. I'll go test this action, which is the find records. So these are all the records that it has found. And then I will create this sales report. So I'll test this action. If I scroll down here, I can see that it was successful and it's actually responded with the link to that document. Well, if you want to take a step further, you could email that link to whoever is responsible for reviewing this information. I'll open up the sales report and this is how it would display. Really simple, but here's a sales report, the date, and you can work on some formatting for the date. And then here is all of your sales reps, their quota, what they've closed and the percent that they have closed. So that's a third option within Airtable you can generate it very easily and quickly within the automations feature in Airtable. The next option 
This option provides endless flexibility. It's using make.com. If you use make to integrate with pdf.co, you can basically create anything you want, any format you want, and make it as customizable as you want. It is more difficult to create depending on what you're trying to do, but the possibilities are basically endless. First thing I'm going to do is show you how to create documents within Google Docs as well. We don't have as much customization or flexibility available doing it this way, but it does give us more flexibility than using the automation, create a Google Doc within Airtable natively. I have a make account set up here and a new scenario set up. And again, really simple use case. I'm just using the search records module for Airtable. I have my base selected. I have my table selected, which is just sales deals. And then the fields that I want to get just want to be name, sales stage, and forecast value along with the signed contract value. So if you select this and pick specified dates, whatever you want here, similar to what we just saw within Airtable at specified intervals, or you can just come in here and run it manually as well. What it's going to do is it will find all of the sales deals here, and then it's going to aggregate that data and it's going to structure in the table format. Fortunately for this specific use case, moving it to Google Docs in a table isn't the most ideal or easily accomplished thing to do. If you want to work with tables and line items, it's probably easier to move to something like pdf.co, but I'm just going to show you a brief example of how this works. So here's my report. You can make this multiple pages if you want. I've got the sales report. I've got date, the double curly brackets wrapping the word date. That's just a placeholder. I can dynamically fill that information from my make scenario. And then this is what I mean about not being able to create tables very easily within Google Docs through the make modules. I just have this set up. There's going to be a name, status, forecast, and closed search records. It's going to find all the records. It's going to aggregate the data accordingly. Again, I just want to bring in the name sales stage forecast value and signed contract value. We're going to separate columns. I just selected other from the drop down, and I'm going to set or separate it with the uh, vertical line here. And then a row separator is just going to be a new row. And from here you select your create a document from a template module within Google docs, and then you can go select the document ID that you want to overwrite essentially. So we'll just copy that for you and then overwrite those templated placeholders that I just showed you. Date, I'm just going to add the now stamp and then the deals placeholder. I'm just going to pass in the aggregated text here or table. And you can select the location you want to save it to and so on. But I'm just going to give this a run so you can see what it looks like. You can see my test document. When I open it up, I've got the date, my sales report, title. And then it's passed in all of my deals that are found here with the information. So the deal name, status, the value, forecasted value, and the closed value, if it has been closed and finalized. This is one option to create highly customizable documents. It would get a lot more complicated than this potentially, but again, you can create basically whatever you want. Google Docs is one great option, but if you want the flexibility to create PDFs and documents in a specific structure, then I would recommend looking into the pdf.co integration and module. It's actually relatively cheap to generate documents using that service, and there is a lot of flexibility. Here's PDF Co. There is actually an extension or a few extensions right within Airtable. If you go over to extensions here, you can add an extension. And if we search pdf.co, you can see the options that we have here. We can get more detailed within using the make integration, but is a little more difficult to use, but you do have some options built right into Airtable as well to integrate with pdf.co. There's lots of different details and different options for being able to 
accomplish a ton of different tasks with PDFs and documents. And you can see here the pricing. There is a basic pricing of $10 a month, and you can get a lot of different pages and credits. And there's pay as you go options as well. So you can explore those, but that is a great option that I have used for a few clients in the past. And then another option that we have here is document. So here's a pricing plan for only 200 documents. It's $30 a month. And then to get more than that, the 800 plus, it is $80 a month. So it's more expensive than pdf.co, but I can almost guarantee that you can get things set up a lot quicker. In this video, I'm not going to dive into document or pdf.co on how to actually perform the integrations and automate your documents and reporting with those. I just wanted to make you guys aware of what is possible. If you need help getting these documents and reports set up or the different integrations that are a little bit more advanced, do not hesitate to reach out. You can book a call using the link in the description below. I hope some of these options might be viable for you to be able to create documents using the page designer simply through interfaces or using the Google Docs automation built within Airtable natively. That is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please hit that subscribe button for more tutorials in the future.